Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. How are we doing? Let's just get my comments up so I can see who is with me. If you're there, don't be shy. Say hello in the comments. Let me know I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> Let's have a little look who we got there. Is there anybody there? Let's sing a little song to myself. Come on, don't be shy. If you're there, say hello. Hello, Camera World. Hello, Paul. How are we? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Right, I'm just going to give it a minute or so, and we'll just have a quick... I'll keep an eye on what's going on. Stuart, how the devil, sir? You well? Hi, Chris. Hello, Margaret. You're in Plymouth. Excellent. Bit nippy down there. Hi, Dave. Good afternoon. If I'm looking down here because that's where my screen is. So I'm looking between here and here. Hi, Tony. Hello, Jenny. Mr. Bracey, good afternoon, sir. How the devil are you? Um, hi, Peter. Sorry if I've pronounced that incorrectly. Anila, Roy, hello from Eastbourne. Hello to you. Thank you, Paul. Good to kind of see you, see your face on there again, if you know what I mean. Hi, Kath. Hi, Angela. In Cannes. Mon Dieu. I'm, I'm hoping it's très chaud in Cannes. Um, lots of spammers on the camera world post. Okay, well, I'm sure that'll be kept an eye on. Uh, Cheryl. Perth, Western Australia. My, well, there was somebody on last um, last time, 28th of Jam, from Australia. So it's about, what, 11 o'clock? Half past 11 at night there, Cheryl? Um, Simon, also in Australia. I imagine you guys are staying up. Good. I'm very, I feel very privileged. Thank you. Um, Bill, good afternoon. It's very sunny. Excellent. Thanks, Angela. Um, Chris in Kent. Hello, Chris. Right, Jacqueline, East Riding, it's 8pm, excellent. Not too bad then, I hope you've eaten. <sighs> Hi Liz, right, I'm going to get on because we've got a few people on there. Good afternoon everybody, hello for those of you who do not know me. My name is Paul Gregory and massive thanks to the guys at Camera World and to Canon UK for sponsoring this event and having me here today, back now, uh, to talk to you about um, product photography. Now, by trade, I am a food photographer, um, but food is a product, and all the bits and pieces that you use when you're photographing food are products as well. It could be cutlery, it could be, you know, glassware, it could be anything like that. Um, so, but we're going to talk today about specifically reflective products and how you deal with those pesky little reflections that pop up when you try and photograph, I don't know, a glass of something, or flowers in a vase, or um, if you've been bought some chocolates for a birthday present or something like that, or maybe even Valentine's. 14th of February, hang on, 11, 12, 13. <gasps> Valentine's Day is coming up. I know what, wouldn't it be great, <laughs> this is not scripted at all, wouldn't it be great if we did something a little bit Valentine's themed? Well, I crowbarred it in there, and um, you can have a bit of a romantic theme. Some of it is fairly tenuous. Uh, I'm kind of running through today's presentation. Um, Paul, yes, this will be available on Catch Up. Once I am finished blabbering and wittering on at you guys for an hour and a bit, you will be able to watch this on the Camera World Facebook page. And considering you're on the Camera World Facebook page already, you guys, it should be fairly easy to find. Uh, Excellent. Right, I'm going to get on with it. So, usually I would have the camera facing a setup. My EOS 5D Mark IV, and whichever lovely piece of glass I decided to use, would be set up and pointing in a direction a lovely plate of food or some plates or a cup of coffee with a cup of chair, all that sort of stuff. Last time I was with you, the gremlins kicked in with the microphone, but hopefully we fix that this time. Um, it's amazing what happens when your little foamy bit falls off. It ruins everything. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I decided, because I'm doing three separate shots for you guys and taking you through three totally different reflective surfaces, that I was going to pre-record them. Which is great. Um, 
did have a few technical issues while shooting, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you um, two videos and one kind of presentation type thing. But the beauty of that is I'm here. I can, if it's a presentation, I can answer questions live. The video, we can go to it afterwards. And there's a lot of technical information within this content. So it's going to be a really good technical workshop as well as a visual workshop. So I hope that's well. Right, what have we got going on? Just check who's down here. Clifford, hello in Stansted. Said hello to Liz. We've had hello to Cheryl. And I need to hello again. Right, so let's get on with it. I'm going to start off looking at glassware. As a food photographer, when I first started doing food photography and someone said, oh, we need to put this in the background, be nice to have a glass of this in the background, be nice to have this in the background. First time I photographed glass was like, O-M-G. It's a nightmare. There are certain things that you can use, certain things you can do within your photography. Hello, Adrian, Mr. Hyde. Sorry to interrupt to see people pop up, pop up. Hello, Stephen. Sorry, I'm late, says Stephen. I'll let you off, buddy. And it's good afternoon, but never mind. <laughs> so those of you that haven't kind of realised, the MacBook is down here. Sorry, laptop is down here. And the camera is here. So, reflections. Reflective materials. They're everywhere. The second you put light on something, I mean, I can see the reflections in my specs here as well. So I know there's reflections everywhere. Got very large windows in front of me. So, um, yeah. Reflections can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on what you're trying to achieve. The best way and the most beautiful bit of kit to have in your bag, the most, probably one of the most inexpensive bits of kit to have in your camera bag, about your person, if you know you're going to photograph something reflective, this isn't just, this doesn't just limit itself to products, yeah? Uh, Mr. Bracey, who said hello earlier, um, is a fantastic landscape um, snapper. He takes the most beautiful kind of water-based landscape photography, see, and stuff like that. And I know he's got a polarizer in his bag, amongst other filters, but you can use polarizing filters for um, everything. So if you've ever, I used to, uh, when I used to work in photographic retail, people were talking about, oh, well, I'm taking pictures through glass and aquarium or in a museum. Uh, how do I not get the reflection? Well, you don't need to that's going to peek back and ruin it straight away. Flash onto a reflective surface. Hello, you might sort of not bother. Um, to polarizing filter. Polarizing filters are awesome. They are, in the grand scheme of things, reasonably inexpensive. And what they do is they basically, they're, there, they're designed to remove reflection. Yeah? So water, glass, polished metal, etc., etc. Absolutely amazing. All it does, it filters out the light. And there are two parts to a polarizing filter. I should have had one with me, but never mind. Ring that screws into the camera. The other ring sits on top that then rotates. The rotating ring holds the polarizing material. And it's circular because autofocus mechanisms on cameras now work in a circular motion. And if it wasn't a circular fabric, it wouldn't work. So what they do is they reduce the reflection in your scene. They also have a really good... There's a really good byproduct. They increase the contrast and color saturation you see, which is kind of handy. Sometimes a plus, sometimes a minus. They also reduce your exposure. So you, I think the one I use, uh, Hoya one I use, anywhere from about half to three stops, depending on what you're using. I think the average is about um, one to two stops. But I've noticed when you rotate it, not only do you see through your viewfinder or your live view screen, what's happening but you will see it darkening so just be mindful of that if you're not shooting it in a priority mode if you've got an aperture priority or shutter priority where the camera obviously backs you up and changes the other exposure function for you then just be aware of that if you're shooting manual if you twist a polarizing filter and you don't make an exposure adjustment you could potentially find yourself under or overexposed Polarizing filters, awesome, really good. Reflectors, amazing. Yeah, the big twist down reflectors, anywhere from that size to that size. I think the one I use is about 42 inches. And you can get them with lots of different surfaces on them, white, black, gold, silver. And literally, 
you can use them, you can flex them, you can get them in position if you're lucky enough to have an assistant working with you, then they can hold it or you can clamp it in position. So reflectors to bounce like back in, which will then help to model. I'm using the word model. When we talk about modeling in light, uh, modeling lights on, um, on Studio Flash, yeah? So it helps you to get more modeling, more kind of character to the light. So polarizers, like polarizers and uh, I've lost, lost my train. Reflectors are the way forward. So I'm just having a quick look. Um, Stephanie missed the start. Well, you're here now, Stephanie. Don't worry. I don't know if you saw what we are doing, but it's all about photographing reflective products today. So, yes, here we go. So, I'm going to show you a video to start off with. And this is me, <coughs> excuse me, playing with, inverted commas, no, shooting um, in a professional and considered manner, um, some glassware. So, it's, it's going to be a couple of glasses um, with... Uh, I think it was elder, sparkling elderflower in it, because when I shot this, it was far too early to open a bottle of anything else. Uh, <laughs> so, although it's probably five o'clock somewhere. So yeah, we're going to go into the video now. Now bear with me, because sometimes this software has a bit of an issue with uh, output. Source, there you go, video file, and we're going to go with... Where's he gone? No, because I'm trying to go to, I'm not doing a video. I'm getting ahead of myself here, guys. I'm not doing a video. We are going to, there we go. We're going to my presentation. So you should now be able to see my presentation. And this is us using glass. That's it, camera world. I am just warming up. You know me, it takes a while. So we're going to talk about glass. And what we're going to, what I want to show you is how I set the shot up. Now, ordinarily, as we said, you'd see me, um, the scene behind me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot of stuff to do in a short period of time. An hour we've got, considering I've just blitzed through what fifteen minutes doing the intro. Mm. So we're going to photo photograph champagne flutes. Now, I'm a big, big, big fan of Bocca which we're going to talk about in more detail in a second, which is what you get when you put a small circular Gemini light source behind your main subject. It's out of focus, long exposure, so you get that lovely glow. It's almost like a pearl-like looking um, effect. So I've, I've crowbarred that one into this as well for you. So um, here we go. So the first shot you can see, we have two champagne flutes, on a piece of black mirror card. Black mirror card, oh my word, what a genius bit of kit that is. Absolutely fantastic. You can get silver, you can get all, you can get all sorts of different colours of mirror card. I like silver mirror card, I also like black. Black generally because it takes on the colour in your background more so than others. And it's a bit more forgiving as well actually, any marks on it. Not as obvious because it's black. So. You can see there I've got a, a pink piece of paper in the background, a nice A2 piece of you know pink uh, sugar paper from you can get from craft shops when they're open. Um, sure, you can get them online from craft suppliers. Go to the middle pick. I have a foam board frame. Now the foam board frame, I've got two A1 bits of foam board, and I've joined them with a. Uh, with some masking tape, I believe. Masking tape, I believe. So I've got to hinge they open close. Um, okay, I'm just looking at a comment. I think someone's jumped on and sending us a load of rubbish. Right, so um, the foam board is a frame which I'm going to use to support everything else in the background, but it's also as a white piece of foam board. It's going to um, it's going to help us to bounce a bit of light back in, or is it? We'll look at that in a second. And I have a piece of black foam board again, a piece of A1 black foam board rested over the top of the set, which is going to basically um, it's what I call a kill spill or a spill kill. What it does 
you see on the right hand side where I have my, um, uh, my reflector, we'll talk more, more about that in a sec, that I don't want the light to go any higher. I don't want it to infringe on the, well, that's a big word for me, infringe on th that background paper as much as possible. So there we go, that's that. So the board, it will, the blackboard will absorb light, but we'll talk about that more later. Right hand side, big 42 inch shoot through scrim. So that's a diffuser. And that basically uh, I have, if you look on the right hand side, I have my Elencron flash head and that is at about a 45 degree angle shooting down on, uh, shooting down through the reflector, uh, sorry, diffuser. And that's gonna give me a lovely soft light. Now, last time we did this on the 28th, it was all about available light and do you know what? I'm very lucky. I have lots of lovely flash artificial light toys to play with, which is great. Um, but I was hope you know, shooting at home, not everyone has this kit. What we're going to do here, I want to be able to show you, this is a little bit of mixing available light, ambient light and flash. So you can do this with uh, a flash head. You can do it with a speed light if you've got a speed light. You just need a speed light and um, that you can trigger remotely off the camera and a, a diffuser. Hey, white baking paper will do it. Yeah, you just kind of attach that up somehow in front of your flash and you don't want your flash to be with this setup any further than probably about 12 inches away from your diffusing surface. So, techniques used in this. So we're going to be balancing ambient light and flash and we're going to be create, creating bokeh or bokeh depending on um, whichever floats your boat and controlling reflections. Dave, do I use a light meter? I do use a light meter um, and I've been mocked for it in the last <laughs> several years by other people. Um, I'm old school, yeah. I learn the old-fashioned way with film. I learn I've worked in studios as an assistant and the you know you would not find me working in the studio without a light meter strung around my neck or hanging out my back pocket. Um, light meters for those of you, excellent. They're a great bit of kit Dave, they really are and as much as you know shooting the joys of digital you can take your picture you can see it straight away as much as kind of <clears throat> excuse me as much as kind of the guesswork, if you like, not so it takes the guesswork out to the light meter. So you put your light meter against the subject, bang, um, and you click it, and the flash goes off, and it, it gives you a light meter reading. So it will tell you you've already told it what ISO you're shooting at, and you give it an idea of the aperture and the shutter speed, and it will then give you the other setting. Obviously, with flash, aperture is what controls the exposure. Shutter speed has no control whatsoever. Um, well, you're, hello Caroline, missed the start, but you're here now. Thank you for joining us. So this is the techniques we're going to use to photograph our reflective surfaces. Just a quick recap there for those who haven't that have missed the intro. So normally, as I said, I'd be set up live doing this, but with all we've got to do, it's just a little bit more streamlined to do this. So we're going to talk first about, about Bokka, because this is kind of being, a, this can be in the background. And what, what Bokka is, for those of you who don't know, the out of focus circles of ambient light um, and this is created by the position of your diaphragm in your lens so the aperture when shooting so the wider your aperture i.e the lower the aperture value f2.8 f2 1.8 1.4 1.2 etc etc um, the wider your aperture value yeah the lower your aperture value the lower the wider your aperture hole, the more beautiful bokeh you're going to get. The higher you go through your aperture range, so you go to, I don't know, uh, 4, 5.6, 11, 16, blah, 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 the softness of that, um, of that light circle in the background is going to become less. Okay, so you're going to get a more defined circle. But with your aperture wider open, um, at, um, I don't know, f2.8, something like that. I tend not to go more than about f4. Um, then, you know, you're going to get beautiful bokeh. 
Peter, bear with me. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so ambient light is used to create. So the amp. So ambient light is used to create it. So what you're looking at is um, ambient light will come from generally when I do bocker like this in my work. It's, I'm using Christmas lights, I'm using fairy lights, yeah, those are LED lights that put out a fairly low power. So when you're shooting um, and you want this kind of bucker effect in a studio effect, um, so I would suggest that you keep your shutter speed as low as possible. We're going to talk about that in a second. So, creating bocker. The best bocker you get using fast lenses, as we said, so 1.2, 1.4, sorry, f1.2, f1.4, f1.8, f2, f2.8, something like that. You can create really, really you can create quite nice uh, sort of bocker with an f4 lens. Um, you just need to make sure that your your light source, your fairy lights, are a little bit further back than you would if you had a um, uh, slightly faster lens. Practically, the further back your fairy lights, your light source for your bucket is in your shot, the better it's going to be. And as I said, the slow shutter speeds help to create um, to bucket by, by kind of, they, they really, really show that ambient glow off a lot more, and that's what you need. So, here is my shot. So, so the bocker, we're there, we can see what's going to go on. My key, the two things I'm looking at here is focus, where the reflections are on my glassware, and a key part of my composition is this beautiful bocker. So I'm not going to go too crazy over that, but the reflection is what I'm going to be looking at. So, we look at these, I've, I've done three test shots here, one at f2.8, one at f4, one at 5.6. Just as a reminder, I'm on an EOS 5D Mark IV with a Canon EF100mm macro uh, f2.8L, which is stunning. Okay, um, so point of focus is on the glass on the right-hand side, just off center to the left slightly. Gone f2.8. Obviously, we've got some chocolates and some roses in the foreground to bring through our romantic theme and a pink background. Now, if you have a look at at that mirror card on the floor of the set, it's picked up that pink. The longer exposure is, the brighter that's going to get because it's it's the ambient light that will show the reflection. So for 5.6, and I think when I looked at this, I was leaning between 2.8 and f4, just looking at that box in the background. Do we have any questions so far? Look at, now, worth pointing out on the side of those glasses, you have on the left hand side of the glass, you've got like a white, um, like a white sheen. On the right hand side of the glass, both glasses, you've got a white sheen as well. There's white reflections and highlights in the what I would refer to as, as the base of the bowl of the glass, yeah. And then you've got reflections, little kind of highlights, uh, pinging off the foil wrapped chocolates at the bottom. Okay, and you've got obviously reflections coming on both sides because the light is coming from the right hand side of the set. And the left hand side, I just have my open white foam board. So that's reflecting the white light back from the left hand side. Not bad. I'm not in this situation, I'm not worried about the actual glass stem because we're going to put something in the glass in a minute, which means that you know you're going to get um, more interest and your eye isn't going to go to that glass stem. It does look richer, but um, uh, that shutter speed, I believe, was about an eighth of a second. But you'll see, um, Stuart, but you'll see the final shot and all of the exposure settings when we get to it. The 5.6 shot, David, does look a little richer, but if you compare it to the f2.8 on the left hand side, look at those, um, um, look at those circles of light in the background. Okay, for me they're a little soft and they just look a little better. But this is just a start off. We're nowhere near finished yet. This is just the process, okay? Because this is very much a process. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I love the Bocker too. So, 
I started off, I think, as I said, I think that was about a quarter, actually the previous shot was about a quarter of a second. So I've gone through here and you have four exposure settings. So I've started, um, the lights have gone in the background, the glasses have gone into situ, I've set my setup. On my right hand side, I've got my flash set at half power. I've got that big 42 inch scrim next to it, giving a beautiful soft light. The scrim, as you would have seen previously, bang slap on the edge of the set. Beautiful soft light, yeah? Gorgeous soft light. We don't want harsh, I don't want harsh shadows for this. If that's if, if that floats your boat, then great. Bring the scrim and the flash a foot or so back away from the side of your set. So we're looking at these, okay? So we've got, I don't know, um, eighth of a second, quarter of a second, half a second, and one second. So you've got varying levels of exposure. Now, don't forget <clears throat> that the shutter speed is not controlling your flash in any way, shape, or form. These, uh, the aperture on these are f2.8, FYI. Um, so the shutter speed cannot control your flash. So your exposure choice, what were we talking about? We're talking about the fact that you need um, a decent exposure or a longer exposure to capture that ambient light. And then you need to be able to balance that between the ambient and the flash. So the flash power will be controlled by the aperture and you'll see in some of these shots, my aperture values change and that is there to create a difference between the flash. Um, Stevens asked, would I recommend image stacking? I'm not a fan of image stacking. Um, it has its place. Um, to be honest with you, I've tried it a couple of times. It didn't really work for me. Um, I know a lot of people, I know there are various people out there in my industry that do use uh, image stacking and focus stacking. Um, but yeah, I don't use it personally, but I'm aware of it and there are merits. It's just not my bag. So let's go back in to the prayers, and you should now be able to see that again. So bounce. Now we saw with the other um, the other images that you have um, on the left hand side of my set. You have the um, you have the white mount board, uh, foam board, sorry, which sits. Now, when you're bouncing light from the right hand side, you, you know, if you don't have anything on the other side, if you just have like empty space, you know, the, the, the other side of your studio, for example, um, that light is just going to drop off and it would be a shame to waste it. So on the left hand side of these two images, um, in front of my whiteboard, I've put a piece of black mount board. Excellent, Dixie. Fantastic. Um, so you have a piece of blackboard, and if you look on that image on the left hand side of that glass, you've got a more defined shadow area. What the blackboard does um, is it, um, it absorbs light. So if the light is coming from the right hand side and it comes across and it hits the blackboard. What the black cardboard, anything that has a matte surface, what it will do, it will absorb that light. So you get more of a shadow. Right hand side image, you place, you take the blackboard out, put the whiteboard back in, you have a white reflection there. Yeah, because it's bouncing that, that white light is hitting that, the light is hitting that whiteboard and bouncing white light back into your scene. And if you have a look at the difference between the roses in both shots and specifically the left hand side of that glass, um, that's good. Uh, Stuart, was the foam board angled slightly to bounce the light at an angle rather than splay across? Do you know what? It was upright. It was vertical. There was no angle at it whatsoever. Um, yeah, it was as, as vertical and as straight as I could get it. When you, when you're bouncing light back into a scene, obviously you can angle these boards, be it left and right, up and down to get light bounce back in in, in um, to different styles and ways. And this is really key when you're shooting with reflective surfaces, because if you can, for example, if I'd have had a taller whiteboard and, bounce, and, and just angled it in towards, so the top of the board is coming over those glasses, 
obviously not in frame, you'd have got more of a highlight across the sort of rim of the glasses. Okay, so I've decided that with these shots, I'm happy with this. When I like glassware, this is pretty much the way I do it. There are multiple ways you can like glassware, okay? And those um, uh, sort of food and beverage manufacturers out there that sell their products in glass bottles, nine times out of 10, when you see a final shot of a, um, of a product in a glass bottle with a label on the front, nine times out of 10, that's a, that is a composite of about four or five images because what the photographer would do they would set up a shot like this they'd have a look at it there would then be a they'd shoot like this they'd then light it from behind to get the um the color of the fluid inside the jar bottle glass whatever it is better lit they would then light it maybe from the front to get a highlight on um on the left hand side they might then light from the right hand side front to get light on the other side so that and make sure that that label is evenly lit to be honest with you this is how i do it it works for me i prefer to shoot with one light and then build a light box or light tent around it okay so if i wanted more reflection really you've lost sound well i'm here um mic's on i'm talking all is good um if I'm talking to myself, someone please tell me. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's just go back. So what I'm getting at is, excellent, thank you, Janet. So you can put whiteboard, blackboards around your scene to create shadows. Thank you, everyone's good. You can create if it's fine for Stephanie in Australia, we're all good, and for Cheryl. Um, so, throw me completely those comments. So, yeah, by using dark black melt ball, black reflectors to absorb light and white reflectors to bounce light, you can create beautiful effects. If I wanted to be really, really, really fussy with this, I did a shot last year of a... Um, a moussey beautiful kind of nutty moussey um, uh, pudding or dessert in a very tall Sunday glass and I had either side of the, the, the glass I had some little pieces of black black foam board that I'd cut to fit just so the height of the the, um, the actual glass itself so that where it was lit you've got this beautiful outline black outline each side cool so this is so this is kind of as i said this is a a whistle stop guide to shooter and flexive services we could spend an hour just setting up this shot but i wanted to give you a bit of a uh, you know a speedy walk through it and then i decided that this would be my final shot so i've gone do you know what f3.5 so I've, as you remember I, I tried different aperture values and different shutter speeds to work out what I think is going to look better for my purpose. My shutter speed was led by the uh, those lovely uh, uh, kind of bokeh lights in the background and the aperture was all about the amount of depth of field I had, how much how much detail there was on the glasses themselves. I kind of like the fact the second glass is slightly out of focus. It brings your eye straight to the first one. If I wasn't thinking Valentine's Day and romantic, I'd have probably done one glass, but hey, who wants to sit and have a glass of, glass of bubbles on their own? Maybe somebody, maybe people are, who knows? Crazy times. But F3.5 worked for me on this. Halfway between your four and your two, well, uh, 3.5 is a third of a stop. Two thirds of a stop from um, f2.8 up to f4. So you've got that little bit of flexibility in your aperture. But as I said, what I also liked was you still had that reflection on the foiled chocolates in the foreground, and you also had a um, nice amount of light on the rose. That, that black mirror card um, surface is looking gorgeous. And you've got a couple of little pings in the foreground, if you look, of the lights that are creating our bokeh. So that 
is my glass of bubbles for two, albeit a sparkling elderflower. Cool. So let's come out of that. Let's close Keynote. So I'm going to bring you back to ugly old me. Hello. I'm sorry about the, um, the technical issues there. I think I tracked gremlins. I don't know what's going on there. But the mic is now working. I'm not going to sit on it. I'm going to put it down here so I don't sit on it again. Um, right. So that's that. Any questions regarding that that I can ping through quickly? I'm conscious it's now 20 to 1, but I'm sure Camera World won't mind if I overrun by about 10 so we get the information on. If we do do that and you have to pop off and go to bed if you're in Australia or whatever, then um, you can always watch back on the Camera World Facebook page at a later date. Camera World, am I run, if I run over, you're going to shout at me. I'll take the stunned silence as a no. So... Next thing I'm going to, so there are no questions regarding the, 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 the old teeth in Paul start again. No, <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee, that's why I'm stuttering. There are no questions about the, uh, about the glassware. No, these image, I will throw these images into um, the feed for this later today, and they will go up on Insta as well. For those of you with, on, with us on my last live here two weeks ago, 28th Jan, then you will see we've set up a hashtag, hashtag CWPGP, Camera World, Paul Gregory Photography, and anything you do, do anything you do shoot off the back of what we've done today or, or on the 28th, if you, if you didn't see it, you can go and watch again. Um, anything you've shot, inspired by what you've seen you know a couple of ideas you've had we'd really love to see them myself and camera world so you know anything you post on your socials hashtag cwpgp or obviously you can find camera world on all the socials and i am at pgp food photography that's pgp food photography right stuart here we go does the color of the drink change any reflection the drink doesn't change a reflection obviously if it was a darker drink if you were if you're doing a different type of glass and you were happening happening to have a specific well-known irish uh, sort of beverage in there then you'd find the reflections were slightly different because it's going to absorb light rather than bounce it through but what you're finding is the receptacle the glass itself is what deals with the reflection so we're going to set up a shot. We have set up a shot behind us even um, with a generic child's building block toy. Hmm. <laughs> so this is going to use, as you can see behind me, I've got a 150 centimeter octobox here, which um, in this situation is going to represent our window. Yeah. Large kitchen window, large dining room window, large living room window. This is going to be a window to all intents and purposes. If you don't have flash, any kind of electronic lighting, artificial lighting, and daylight is amazing. You know, it's around everywhere normally. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to use this and we're going to assume that this is our daylight. Okay, if you've got flash and you want to use it and you've got a big octobox like this, which will give you a beautiful soft light, great. If you haven't, and you have a decent sized window, happy days, just as good. So I'm going to show you the setup and then we're going to look at the, uh, the lighting. We're going to look at how to get rare reflections that this very reflective, very angular surface is going to give us. So here we are. Um, so the camera is angled down on my set. Uh, so you can see we've got some roses made out of a generic plastic kids building blocks. Uh, we've got a couple of mugs there, and we've got some Valentine-style chocolates. And the vase that the roses are sat in, um, we have water, inverted commas, which again are these, it's a translucent uh, building brick, which when we shoot it in a bit, you're going to see, it, it kind of gives the effect of water. So that is what we're going to do there. So the set. I'm sat on a 80 by 90 centimetre um, surface board, which has a bit of a um, marbly kind of look to it. It's more kind of clay, actually, than marbly, but it has a little bit of marble look to it. Behind the board, excuse me, and to the left, you can see we've got bits here 
there's my hand, of um, foam board. So these are A1 pieces of foam board, which I've um, joined together, very Blue Peter style with some masking tape. And out the back, we have a background board, which is a faux brick wall. When you're dealing with reflective subjects, you want to try and get as much light around it as physically possible. You want as much bounce going on. Because if we just use a single light and had a lot of kind of black dark areas around it, that's going to soak up light. Yeah, so um, we have the bounce boards here. If I was to use um, a black board here rather than a white board, that black board will absorb that light rather than reflecting it back like a white does. So you can do this with tin foil, you can do it with reflectors, you can do it with anything you have that's white. You can do it with loads of bits of paper if you want kind of, um, to tape them together and put them across one piece. But however you do it, my advice is when you're doing something like this is to get as much light bouncing into your surface as physically possible. So I just wanted to give you a slightly closer up view of what we did was to zoom in on the camera a little bit. So this is the G uh, PowerShot G7X Mark III I'm using to do this for you. Beautiful little vlogging camera. Um, so you can see we have the reds, we have the greens on the leaves. You can see the red down here, very contrasting. So we've got the matching colors, we've got complementary colors. So we've got the reds, the greens, and then the blue on these little enamel mugs and the blue of these bricks and the blue of my shirt as well which is quite good so we're going to go through now my camera which is the eos 5d mark IV with the 100 mil macro f 2.8 l and i'm going to show you what the scene looks like and then we're going to start to light it and start to kind of build the story and start to deal with these reflections which we're inevitably going to get so yeah so what i'm saying here is you've got three shots left hand side the softbox is um is parallel to your set middle the softbox has moved slightly about 25 30 degrees an angle and the third shot on the right hand side we have everybody's back woohoo on the right hand side you have the softbox going at 45 degrees of an angle there is a difference. As you move that light around, there is a difference. And what is interesting as well is that it darkens. I've not changed any settings at all. Um, it's about f2.8, about half a second, I think, but we'll confirm that later. All I'm doing, by moving this light around, you change your reflection, you change the angle of the light, you change the feel of it. But the most important thing on the left hand, the image on the left hand side, you've got that very, very obvious highlight on the side of this vase okay as you move the softbox on shot number two in the middle around towards the front of the set by a minimal amount you've lost that reflection and you've now got more highlights on the roses themselves am i losing the bounce no the bounce is on the left hand side so the bounce is still there um on the left hand side what we're seeing is as we move that light round, the direction of the light is changing so therefore the coverage is slightly different. I have got on top of this a piece of white um, white bounce, I believe, pushing the light down. So that's how moving your light and angling your light can help you with reflections. Obviously, if you are using a window, <laughs> you can't really move your, your living room window. So if you've got a background or a surface board like this and all you literally do is you move your board around you move your subject to get the right angle the right um amount of light to get the right reflection and so on let's pause that because i didn't want that so this is the final shot from what we've done there um the light is the light was at the 45 degree angle f 2.8 a 50th of a second at iso 50. those of you who've seen me uh, shooting before and have seen my workshops before, you will know I, I favour the lower ISO to make sure I get the best value, um, the best quality possible on the image. Yeah, um, so ISO, very low. I've got lovely highlights there on the, uh, on the foiled chocolates and you've got a little bit of highlight burn on the bricks inside the vase, but do you know what? It just works. Um, 
I then took a secondary shot, which was um, slightly higher angle and to get both roses in more of a focus. I've gone to F13 here just because it was too, I don't know, F2.8 wouldn't do it. And obviously I've moved higher and away from the subject and I wanted to get more of that back rose in. So that's what we've done. I've moved the cups out of the way. We've got the hearts in there. Yeah, works really well. Nice little product shot. Um, highlights on the plastic roses have, we've just kind of dealt with them. We've kept them at bay and we'll go from there. 